Hello again from my front porch. Uh, I have been, well, I've been gone actually the whole, uh, pretty much the entire last week to two conferences, two overlapping conferences taking place almost at the same time on the same week, just like one day or two days staggered from each other. And to make things even more interesting, I was speaking at both of them. <laughs> Seriously, uh, I, uh, I, I, one was the uh, Association for Talent Development's Core Four, and uh, I was presenting at, at that one. And uh, then the other one was something from Training Magazine called Tech Learn. Uh, and uh, for the first one, I was talking about the you know smart ways to to do customized on-the-job training because you know that's my my ballywick. <laughs> if you don't know that term, look it up. It's a good old fashioned term that we should be using more of. Anyway, uh, but so then there was that. And then the second conference, actually, I was part of a panel uh, of, of other professionals that we, there are three of us, and we were talking about doing leadership training in high risk environments and, and you know, what, what that dynamic means to that. And so uh, that, that was a very interesting conversation that was had there as well. Uh, but one of the things, whew, it's warm out here. You might see me starting to sweat profusely, uh, but I got to get ready for it. So I'm planning to go down to, uh, to a, a, a Latino festival that we have going on in Des Moines today. And I'm sure it's going to be pretty warm down there too. Anyway, that's why I'm all festive looking. See? Anyway, there was something that I heard at one of, in one of the sessions at one of the conferences that just really grabbed onto me. And the funny thing was, it wasn't even the point of the session. It was almost like a throwaway phrase or an observation that the presenter made, but it just like, you know, you, you hear these things and it just goes, wow, yeah, and, and, and that was this, this, this idea of the balance between what if and so what? What if versus so what? And what that, what that means is we get so paralyzed to try something new. To, to, to pursue our dreams, to try to, you know, uh, I've always wanted to try this and you know, experiment with that, whatever. We, we, we paralyze ourselves from being able to do that because we fixate on, well, but what if, what if this happened? What if that happened? What if it doesn't work? What if I fail? What if, what if, uh, you know, th it doesn't go the way that I want it to. And so then there's these results and, and I'll, I mean, a lot of times, not all the time, obviously, but a lot of times we worry about stuff that's never going to happen. And yet those things will paralyze us from actually taking steps to do it. It's the justification that some of us use to not even try in the first place. Well, yeah, I could try it. Yeah, I probably could do a decent job, I could probably get there. But ultimately, this would likely happen. And so what if that happened, then I'd be sunk. And so I just better not, I better just leave it alone. That, I mean, that's that's the, the rationale that a lot of us have. And so this speaker said, we get all fixated on the what if. What if this happened, even though there's a good likely chance the if will never happen, but what if instead of, what if, what if, what if, what if instead of, <laughs> we instead focus on, so what? What if I try this and it doesn't work? So what? What's the worst that could happen? Well, this is, no, but really, what's worse? And I, I, with that one, I'm reminded of something that my, my pastor has said uh, on many occasions, uh, and that is, if we're gonna try this new thing, and if this new thing does not work, we can always go back to what was not working before. <laughs> and I'll give you a moment to think about that. <laughs> uh, but 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 still, there there is this there is this reality check with these things, and uh, uh, it's like okay, yeah. So so we're gonna try this. If, uh, you know, we need to try something new because whatever we're doing isn't working. So we're gonna try this new thing. But what if it doesn't work? So what? The worst that would happen is we go back to what wasn't working before. <laughs> what if I do this and and I make a fool of myself? So what? Odds are you make a fool of yourself many other times and many other ways too for things that are far less important to you. Yeah? Huh? What if 
I, I, I spend money on, on this experience. And, and then I realize, oh, I probably shouldn't have spent that much. I have a, a really close friend who has gone on several trips. I'm not going to out them to who they are because I don't have their permission to tell the story. Uh, but but uh, uh, after one of their recent uh, excursions, uh, commented that, yeah, that one, maybe they shouldn't have spent quite as much on because, you know, really, really, they have a budget for these kind of things. And that one really kind of exceeded the budget. And so now there was going to be this... Uh, you know, okay, now we got to juggle some finances, balance, you know, balance, keep all the books in balance because they're very adamant about making sure that, you know, they're not overspending the stuff. And so that's the, that's the caution. And they feel like they had went a little beyond that line <laughs> that they were comfortable with. And so, uh, but, but they could have said, well, I'm not going to do this, this excursion or all the excursions, whatever. I'm not going to do this because it might cost me too much money. But instead, they chose the so what without ever knowing because this is the first time I'm sharing this. I haven't even talked to them about this. <laughs> but uh, with, without knowing this, they went with the so what. What if I spend money to have this experience and it costs me more than I was expecting it might cost me or it digs deeper into my savings than I was anticipating having to dig, whatever the case may be. So what? You still have money. You're still paying the bills. Just that's, that's all still there. And you have the richness of having had that experience. That's kind of the mentality I had earlier this year when I went to that Star Trek thing up in Ticonderoga, New York. That was an expensive little excursion, let me tell you. Uh, and I won't even start reciting the numbers, but I mean, in addition to the hotel, in addition to the airfare, in addition to the rental car, uh, there was also the fees for all of the things, and I did the full boat VIP experience with multiple tours, hanging out with William Shatner and other celebrities, getting lots of photos, you know, doing all that kind of stuff. I spent a lot of money uh, on that trip. Uh, but the reason I rationalized it was, okay, yeah, it's going to cost me money and I probably could have done other things, paid other bills or done other things with that money, but so what? William Shatner's in his 90s. He's not going to be around forever. And he's here at this location giving guided tours of the sets from the original Star Trek series, sharing his thoughts and ideas about it. So how do you pass that up? Well, I, to me, obviously, I said, I can't. I can't do that. Same thing with going to see so many monkeys events when they were when when they were still going before Mike Nesmith passed away and then it was just Mickey Dolan's. And I've still spent money to go to Mickey Dolan's events. In fact, you know, we just did the thing uh, with my sisters going up to Mason City, which, by the way, if you have not watched the episode, go back and watch it. I think it's hysterical. I think it's one of my favorites of this show. Um, but that we you know bought the bought the, the admission tickets, bought reserved seating in a booth. Uh, paid for three tickets for the, the VIP experience afterwards with Mickey Dolan's photos and having him sign stuff. You know, so all of that, that costs money. What if we do that and it's a lot of money? So what? It's a unique experience that isn't always going to continue to be available. And someday you will regret not having pursued whatever it is that is on your radar. Whatever that dream is, whatever that goal, whatever that deep desire of what you want to go after, if you don't go after it, you will regret it. You will spend the rest of your life going, man, I wonder what could have happened. Don't get hung up on what if. Swing your pendulum over to so what. What if I take this risk and it doesn't pay off like I want? So what? you will at least know you tried. Now, it was funny because both of these were training and education conferences and that has really nothing to do directly with training. Uh, but, but, but that was a golden gem that resonated with Paul personally. And it's one that I'm gonna try to keep in mind. I'm gonna try to keep evaluating that against the, the opportunities that present themselves to me and not get stuck in, a, in, a, in a, an over analytical what if and instead, be a little more adventurous, be a little more embracing of so what. I challenge you to do the same. Now, don't be stupid, don't be, don't be ab uh, absurdly off the scale with that, but just free yourself up a bit. 
don't stay locked in here. Let yourself go over here. At least touch your big toe in the water over here. Just see what it feels like. I think you'll like it. And with that, as I am still woo, sweating like crazy, <laughs> uh, I was going to say sweating to the oldies, but I guess it's more like sweating the oldie is sweating. <laughs> with that, I'll see you all next time from my front porch.